Okay, I'm gonna walk through a quick uh, outdoor kitchen here that we did and finished up last year. Just wanna highlight some of the things that we always call out in kitchen so we're kinda all get on the same page and think about things in the same way. This is a big L-shaped kitchen, obviously, with a uh, seating bar behind it that overlooks the kitchen and the pool and regular 36 inch countertop in front of it. So when we're calling things out or when Sheila does, uh, we just keep in mind some of these things to note and with customers. So uh, one, step one, I guess, we'll just work through kind of where we set cabinetry. So cabinets, as you notice, are all set at the same height at the bottom. So some of these cabinets for outdoor kitchens come in different different heights. So this one over here is a three drawer next to a trash. So set the bottoms all the same because um, you, you can't keep consistency at the top. So set them all at the same at the bottom minus your fridge, which is always typically going to sit on the ground like that. Uh, it's easiest to slide in, slide out. There's nothing to get the door snagged on the bottom. Um, these guys we like to set up at least like that two to three inch high. Uh, one, when you're spraying down a patio, it doesn't spray everything inside those doors. I mean, it does a little bit, but not terrible. That keeps them a little cleaner. Plus it just is nice. It just looks more natural than setting it on there just like a cabinet would have a toe kick inside. Um, so that's how we kind of like to mount that. The grill, typically always this is the Somerset grill, Somerset 32 Pro. Um, it's going to be the same everywhere. I mean, this is always what they look like inside. They've got the briquettes outside. You've got dials. You've got lights and front LED lights. So that's how those go. Starting, they're really easy. They're a push and light. So you just push in, turn till you hear gas, and then turn past that and it ignites. So you can't really hear it there, but wait for the click, hold it, and then turn to light. So when you're walking through customers, always do a walkthrough. Show them the lights, show them firing it up. I usually, before I do a walkthrough with a homeowner, will let that thing burn for high for like 30 minutes. Just let it get ripping hot, burn off those kind of that smell, that stainless steel and then the oils in there. Um, and then you've got, they've done a good heat test too. You make sure it gets up to 500, 550 degrees um, and it can sustain that and you've tested it. So you test all the burners, test all the lights. Um, when you're doing these things, there's always gonna be a little bit of a gap underneath. So you wanna keep it to a minimum so it doesn't look terrible, but you're always gonna have a little bit of an air gap, which is fine. You want some airflow in these things. You're gonna get a little bit in your doors because you've got, you know, not a 100% seal, but you wanna get a little airflow underneath these things. And when you pull out a drip pan, that thing is in there like that. You don't want it to get stuck on stone. So to leave a little air is fine. Um, you just wanna minimize it so it doesn't look unsightly. And so you don't have too small of a stone between the grill and the doors. You don't want that to be itty bitty where it's something that's gonna fall off or look silly. Uh, you want it to be at least substantial. Um, otherwise, grill wise, that's about it. Oh, underneath, you do want to make sure this is kind of how we frame these things underneath. So metal framing kind of in the cavity. You want that cavity to be clean. So when they open it, you don't want it to be trashy. They've got some extra uh, like a heat thing for the grill in there. That's where you typically have your plug right behind. You're mounting your transformer either, either off the ground or on a back stud or a sidewall stud. Um, you want your concrete to be clean. Now this has been sitting for over the winter and for a while, so there's some cobwebs, but keep it clean in there. When you open it up, you don't want it to look like a, a trashy mess. Um, and then you got your metal studs all the way around for heat. Um, and then there's also one going across the back and that's what supports that grill. It sits up in there. Um, just like you'd frame something else or wire something else, try to have your electricians keep things pretty clean. I mean, even though it's unfinished space, you don't want to open that up and again it just looks like there's wires going everywhere um you just want it to look professional uh, electrical boxes for outlets and this one has a crazy amount because the electrician ran into a weird code thing and there was a goofball here that made us put in a bunch but normally you're going to have a couple backsplash backsplash outlets so avoid the bubble cover things we don't like those they're okay if you have to do one or two or maybe like if you've got an outlet down at the ground um, but up here, they're cumbersome, they're ugly. These are an okay flipper, flipper dude. So flip it up, plug it in. 
There's other ones that is just a solid one panel flip, and those are nice too. They come in bronze, they come in gray, black, white, whatever matches everything well. This guy and all of these are with an extruded kind of electrical box. So you can tell your electricians, get an extruded one, that way the stone tucks up nice to it. It gets it out a little bit away so you're not bloody in your knuckles trying to open these things or hit the top or whatever. It just pops it out a little bit. So you've got a little bit of freedom. Um, I don't know if we have a GF or if we have a USB on any of these, probably one of these somewhere. I like to at least put a USB in one or two of the countertop or the backsplash outlets. That way they always have ability to uh, plug some stuff in. So moving on to kind of wood structure, we've got a roof here with, so just calling it out, you'd call out a tongue and groove uh, ceiling. This is tongue and groove pine. So you just call it out as TNG pine with, this is a natural clear coat seal on it. Um, outdoor fan with no light kit and just simple LED uh, flush mount uh, can lights. Outlets in the ceiling for TV mounts later. This one has a mount for um, a little LED strip light that runs around that crown molding. So same thing, crowns mounted up there, sealed to match, that light illuminates at night. Uh, post wise, just this is a six by six post. These are sanded on all sides. So call out wise, this would be what's called a, a six by six S4S cedar. So that's sanded four sides. Uh, it's gonna be a true like five and a half, not six by six. Bottom wise, this is how you would just kind of trim this. Now this is cedar, like just a ripped down little one by. So three quarter inch wide by one inch high. This could have been a one by three. It could have been a one by four. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy high, but you know that you don't want to go any really smaller than that or they pop off. Um, you can caulk around this line, caulk around that line if you want. These are just pin nailed um, in there. So again, that hides your granite kind of beauty ring to the wood. Um, corbels, when we talk about corbels hanging on countertops, this is a good example of just a cedar corbel. Now these can be, this one actually has steel and wood. So you can see a little steel plate right here that runs. So this runs back into the framing and overlaps this wall to give it support and it's bolted down through the top plate of this, this wall. This guy comes out screwed in down here and then it supports your countertop here. So anytime you're doing a bar countertop that does have overhang with a very little bit of support, so you only have 12, maybe 10 inches here, you have to have a corbel or else this thing will just flip over at some point. So that's how you wanna do that. Now, if you have a countertop that's one monolithic slab, like this guy, and it's got all of this body to hang on to, you can clear, hang that over about an eight inch to nine inch overhang and be okay. So you do not have to do a corbel on this portion, but on the little bitty bar top, you do have to do corbels. Uh, overhang wise, you always want to have that overhang on that granite at least about an inch and a half to two inches. So that makes enough room for some lights and we'll show you some lights on some of these on the back side. But uh, you want to make sure you have enough overhang that you can get those lights positioned to hang out past the stone and not be still past the countertop area. So that's a good uh, example of a kitchen. We've got doors uh, with combinations in them. So this is what would just be called masonry two door with access door combo. So the two doors here, just open up big deep drawers. This guy open access to underneath, um, not watertight, you know, so it's not like a box in there. It's just open to framing. Um, a three drawer stack, which is actually a two drawer with a um, paper towel holder. And then you're gonna have masonry trash or LP tank pull out there with a little vent on the bottom. So again, that's kind of outdoor kitchen components 101. Mount them all the same height, mount them all the same depth, get them all the same masonry frames, which gives you a nice big return. So you only have a little bit of stone that shows right here. So otherwise, if this is sitting way back, you're gonna have a huge chunk of stone showing, which if that stone's cut, you're gonna have a bunch of aggregate that you see when you're using a cultured stone like this one. Um, if it's natural stone, you cut it, it's a little bit better, but you're still gonna have a cut edge. So the further this can be pulled out and the smaller bit of reveal is better. 
Um, so going back to the back side where you've got the countertop overhanging and those lights. So these little lights that tuck up under there, you always want to make sure you have enough room when you're overhanging your countertop that those lights can hang far enough out that they don't get blocked by the stone. Um, so it's good to know one, your stone depth, two, what your light size is, and then make sure your countertops overhang enough past that. These guys actually rotate. So this one in particular has a rot this whole band will rotate out. So if you want to kick it out further and you have to have some crazy stone that's, you know, undulating or back and forth, you could kick that out to get more ground effect and less wall effect. But if you want more wall effect, you face, you face them down. Uh, on the concrete pour on this one, you'll notice there's expansion that goes all the way around this square. So this is one monolithic pour that is the footing for the kitchen and has the footings incorporated for the outdoor or for the pavilion structure. So on these corners, there's about a two foot by two foot by 48 inch deep hole that's going for this guy. Um, and that's for each of these four corner posts. And then the slab was poured and finished over top. So that whole thing is kind of one slab. Then you break it with an expansion and you're moving to then, which would be a secondary pour that's going out and around everything else. Um, other than that, for outdoor kitchen, this kind of wraps it up. I and mean, this is a great example of kitchen with bar um, seating. This has lots of bar seating. You're usually going to account for, you know, two to two and a half feet per individual. So if someone wants to seat four people, you need an eight foot long bar, you know, something like that, maybe nine. Um, columns, when you have a, a secondary or third little column that sits out of the way, just make sure that when you're designing it, just use some common kind of just common hierarchy sense. This little column should not overpower anything else. It shouldn't look weird. It should either be the exact same height or the same height as the back. So it's either gonna be the same height as the counter or the same height as the, the bar height. So don't go making that thing a weird like little shorty or big tall um, unless there is an, is an effect for it and it's gonna be something really different. But most of the time make it all match. And then the cap on this can obviously be different or you could match it but this really calls out for the stone. They've got these caps in the front, so it kind of matches the rest of the, the house that's going on. Um, that is pretty good for an outdoor kitchen. Um, ask us if you have questions. This is kind of what we're gonna look for for fit and finish. You've got little eyeball lights in that soffit too. Um, one thing to call out, this is, so this is what you call a soffit. So you've got gutter with a soffit material. This is just, you know, you've got tongue and groove ceiling here. This is what we would just call like a flat panel ceiling. So this is soffit material. Um, it's also called just, um, you know, sheet siding. So this is just caulked, painted sheet siding. You can mix and match them. This could have also been tongue and groove or vice versa. You know, this inside could have been all smooth painted as well. So when you're calling these out in scopes and you're reading them, that's what we're kind of talking about on that stuff. Um, one little other note, this is kind of a, this is how we got the power up to the top. So obviously these are solid posts. On this one, we ran, you got your bank of switches right here. The electrician just snuck into this sidewall, went up the outside of this post right here, and then we just capped it with a piece of cedar to make it all match and kind of look blended in as one. So this hides having a big piece of conduit run up the side of that. Now, some places you could get away with that, like on the back side of that column, you could put conduit, but you're also gonna have people sitting there in this one, so we can't put that. So there's a couple of ways to do it. You can router out the post and cap it, um, or you can just make a, a channel in there. So this is a cap over, this is just a little bitty strip in there that's probably this wide and this wide, and you're creating a dead man, kind of a dead hollow channel inside that thing, and you're running your power up to the top. So all in all, this is a nice outdoor kitchen, functions well. You can see a lot of people. You can look at the pool and everything else that's kind of going on uh, from this. You can hang some TVs in here. It's a big structure. It's a hip structure um, or gabled on four sides. So it just comes up and goes to kind of a, a middle ridge in the middle of that that runs across metal uh, roofing with a ridge cap and covers. All right, take that, run with it, build some cool stuff, outsiders.